What's up Smart Homers, my name is Aaron and in this video I want to show you a new product from Miros, the Smart Electric Baseboard Thermostat. I've been looking around for a Smart Electric Baseboard Thermostat for a while and Miros sent me theirs to test out. This thermostat works with Apple HomeKit, it also works with Google and Amazon Assistants, and it works with Samsung SmartThings. It also works locally with Home Assistant, which I'm going to show you guys a little bit later. This device works with a bunch of 120 volt and 240 volt AC systems, but I'm gonna show you it with a 240 volt AC baseboard heater. Out of the box, you get a manual, some wiring stickers, your Apple HomeKit setup code, and the thermostat itself. There are also some wire nuts and some screws in the bottom of the box. You can see the back of the thermostat has three wires, line, neutral, and load. These are typically the three wires you'd see in the box in the wall if you remove your baseboard's thermostat. On the side, you get the HomeKit pairing code again, but I think it's probably better to remove that once it's installed. On the bottom, you have a screw that, once loosened, allows you to remove the face of the device to make installation a little easier. To get this device installed, you can actually use the Miros Home app, which walks you through the installation in a really easy to understand way. So I'd recommend that if you've never replaced one of these before. The first thing you should do is shut off your breaker that powers your heater. Now you're gonna remove your old thermostat, which is pretty simple in my case, unscrewing the two slotted screws. Side note, slotted screws should be illegal. Good thing I have this little screwdriver to remove them. Now we just pull the wires out of the box to see what we're working with. Note that I take some pictures of the wires so that I remember how they're hooked up, and then when I disconnect them, I can also label them with the provided labels. We'll disconnect the wires from the old thermostat and prepare them for the new one by straightening them and taking the wire nut off the neutral wires. We should see a line or hot wire, a load wire, and a neutral wire. Typically the hot is black, the load is red, or black in my case, and the neutral is white. If you don't see a set of white neutral wires bonded together in the box, your heater doesn't use a neutral wire and you're not going to be able to use this thermostat. Using one of the provided wire nuts, we're going to attach the red neutral wire on the new thermostat to the neutrals in the box. We'll attach the load to the load wire and then the line wire to the hot wire. I like to tuck the wires neatly back into the box in such a way that they're not going to have any tension on them. And then we'll install the back plate of the new thermostat, ensuring that the up arrow is pointing up. Then we'll use the provided screws to secure the back plate to the electrical box. Finally, we'll just pop the body of the thermostat onto the back plate and then screw in the screw on the bottom using our handy wow stick. Okay, so now that it's installed, we just need to turn the power back on and we're good to go. You're going to see the display light up now and you can continue the setup in the app. The display may look a little washed out here, but it's actually pretty easy to read. It's just the camera settings, I guess, and it's even easier with the light off, of course. The flickering that you see in this video is not actually going to be there in real life. It's just the frame rate I'm using to record. Once it's all set up, we can look at some of the settings in the app. But before that, I want to show you all the manual controls that this thing has. The display shows the current temperatures of the room and a tap of the up and down arrows shows the set temperature and allows you to adjust that set temperature manually. There's also a power off button that allows you to turn the baseboard completely off. Tapping the little tree icon cycles the display through the different temperature presets, which are comfort, sleep, and economy, as well as the currently scheduled temperature. For manual controls on the device itself though, that's pretty much it. The app though is where I think this device gets really cool. And I've said this before, I really love the look of the Miros app. Very clean. It has a pretty typical thermostat control, giving you the ability to set the temperature wherever you want. It shows temperature and humidity measurements in the middle of the screen, and down near the bottom, you get the ability to change the mode from manual to auto. In manual, the temperature stays where it's manually set, and in auto, it follows a set schedule. In manual mode, you also have the ability to turn on the different presets, which can be configured in the settings. In the settings menu, you have a ton of different options. One of the first being a child lock. When you turn on child lock, any attempt to change the temperature at the thermostat is gonna result in a CL being displayed on the screen. As a dad with four kids, I really love this feature and I noticed that their air purifier, which I have and may review later, also has a child lock feature. Very cool. Let me know if you guys wanna see a review of that air purifier as well. The next option is brightness, where you can set the operation and standby screen brightnesses. After that, we have the three presets, which I showed earlier. Next, we have the schedule option where you can set a temperature schedule for each day. I set this up so that every morning the bathroom gets warm when I take my shower, and since the towel rack is right above the heater, my towel is nice and toasty when I get out. 
The next option is hold action, which determines how long a manually set temperature is held. After the hold is over, it's going to go back to the schedule. There's even an option to switch temperature units between freedom units and Celsius, and it even lets you calibrate the temperature if you have a more accurate sensor in there. Next, it shows you how much power is consumed by the heater, which is pretty cool since electricity does cost quite a bit. The open window option is meant to notify you if there's a sudden drop in temperature, like if a window is open on a cold day. The frost protection option, I think, should actually be called freeze protection, and it specifies a minimum temperature at which the heat will come on, even if the thermostat is off, to prevent freezing of water pipes. The switching differential specifies how far above or below the set point the temperature needs to be before the heater turns on or off. There's a summer mode, which turns off open window detection and frost protection for the summer months, and lastly, there's an automation tab. I'm not gonna get into automations with their app because as you know, I do all my automations in Home Assistant. Speaking of Home Assistant, I wanna show you two ways to integrate this device with Home Assistant. The first is gonna be using the HomeKit controller integration. This is a built-in integration, so when you open devices and services, you should see that it's automatically discovered. When you add it to Home Assistant, you may need the HomeKit pairing code. Once added, you'll see that you get a climate or a thermostat entity, current temperature and humidity sensors, and even the ability to change the temperature display units. I really love that the current temperature and humidity are coming through in Home Assistant because now I don't need a separate temperature and humidity sensor to control my bathroom exhaust fan. Now the second way to integrate this device is to use a third party integration from the Home Assistant community store called Miros LAN. Like the HomeKit controller integration, this integration also allows for local control of your thermostat, but it provides a lot more entities than the HomeKit controller did. In addition to what the HomeKit controller integration provided, this one also provides some of the energy info that we saw in the Miros app. It also provides a window open sensor, temperature preset settings, temperature calibration, and screen brightness control. It doesn't allow you to set child lock though, which is a bummer, and it also doesn't provide the current humidity, which the HomeKit controller integration does. Anyway, you have the ability to use both these integrations. Nothing says you have to use just one of them, so you can kind of have the best of both worlds. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. I've been using this device for a while now, and basically it just works. There's really no trick to it. It does exactly what I need, and a little bit more even. And if you compare the price to some of the other ones that are out there, this one is actually a great deal. I hope this installation and setup guide has helped you. And if you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. I actually plan to compare the Miros thermostat with the MISA electric baseboard thermostat. So if you're interested, definitely subscribe so you see that one when it comes out. If you want to support the channel, you can become a member, buy me a coffee, or pick up one of my custom t-shirts at my store. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you.